All right, a few problems with this stuff. Okay. The verbal behavior issue, right? <laughs> uh, verbal behavior is great. You know, the, all the stuff that I'm doing now is undergoing reinforcement and punishment and all that stuff. But with regard to avoidance, okay, you can it, you, or negative reinforcement, you can run into some certain problems. Think about promises, right? So, you know, what? You know, as I'm getting ready to explain it to you here, think about what a promise might do. What? What is the? What is the issue there? If I make a promise. And then do I follow through on it? Do I not? What happens, right? If I say I'm going to do something, right, um, and then I don't follow through with that in the future, right, then you've kind of got this weird avoidance thing going on and it gets in maybe an escape sort of thing. So think about threatening, right? If I threaten to do something, and say, I'm going to do the, you know, if you don't do this, I'm going to do blah, right? So, or if you engage in that behavior, I'm going to beat you silly or something to that effect. Um, well, are you really going to go through with it? Because if you're not really going to go through with it, then you probably shouldn't be saying it because then it'll weaken that, that verbal control. Right? Conditioned aversive stimuli. Right? This is another one that's a real problem. Too many things can get conditioned, right? Too many things can be tied in with that um, sort of negative experience, with that bad experience, that, that uh, punisher, if you will, right? Um, so again, conditioned aversive, we've got that context. The context itself can become an entire conditioned aversive stimulus. Um, so think of something along the lines of, I'm drawing a blank here on, on, on the context of the example that I want, that I was wanting to use earlier. Shoot, I hate it when I do that. Again, remember that learning happens in a particular context. So if, and, and that we're talking about avoidance here, so we have to realize that you've experienced some negative stimulus or some aversive stimulus in the first place. So now the fact that you've experienced that aversive stimulus, it may connect to more things. So let's say that dri the beeping sound while you're driving is a really, a really aversive one, a really strong one. It could be that driving gets connected to that as well. So then driving itself becomes something you want to avoid. And in reality, that's not something that's good, right? That's, that's, uh, that, that's going to cause problems for you in the future. Um, so that's what we need to worry about with about too many things getting conditioned. Uh, this is part of that stuff that happens when people get anxiety. There's so many things that can get tied in with that anxiety because the anxiety happens in a particular context. And anxiety is an aversive stimuli, so that then might connect with other aversive stimuli, maybe test anxiety, which may then generalize to the class, which may then generalize to other classes and so on and so forth, where the whole thing of school becomes this sort of anxious situation. So we do have to worry about using these types of tools to control behavior. And that said, you know what, these are probably the most common ones, at least in our society, that we use to control behavior. You know, uh, you're all about driving, driving on the road and following the rules on the road is all about um, avoiding a ticket, right? <laughs> or avoiding an accident. You stop at the stoplight to avoid the accident. Your cop doesn't walk up to your door when you stop at the stoplight and come give you five bucks. You know, it's not, you're not going to get a reinforcer for stopping at the stoplight or at the stop sign. Um, you're avoiding, you're not going to get a positive reinforcer. You're going to get uh, an avoidance situation or um, an escape situation. And you know, so our society is largely based on negative reinforcement, but it does have its problems, um, especially if you're trying to use it to specifically train up a particular behavior. But, you know, it's it's quite functional. It, it, there is a lot of examples of it out there. You know, any medicine, uh, medicinal stuff, any health behaviors, all those things are all negative reinforcement, either through escape. Um, so like taking a, a pill to reduce your symptoms. So again, reducing the symptom, removing it so you're escaping it or engaging in healthy eating to avoid long-term problems down the road. You know? Uh, you know, There's all sorts of stuff that are very applicable here, but you know, there's problems with it. Again, the verbal behavior stuff, and then if you, know, if you end up with some anxiety, you can end up with all sorts of condition aversive stimuli. And it doesn't have to be just anxiety, it can be all sorts of stuff. Think about how depression plays into this. You know, you start avoiding things because everything is bad, right? You know, and it's all through negative reinforcement. And that avoidance then gets strengthened because then you're not going to go, you know, you, if you stay at home in my bed, then I can't fail at anything outside of my house. I can't fail at work. I can't fail at school. I can't fail with my friends. I can't fail in a relationship. I can't fail, blah, 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 blah. So you end up getting reinforced for that. And then so it just turns into this nasty cycle. So that's part of the problems that are associated with this stuff.